Where are they? Has no one condemned you? What happened? They all went away. They all took off. They dropped their stones and they walked away. And she's standing there with Jesus right there in front of her. And he says, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? You guys remember her statement, no, Lord, they've all gone. Well, the Bible says that the one who had the right to condemn, the one who had the authority, the one who had that power to do that, what did he do? He ended up protecting her. He ended up protecting her dignity. Like I said, who knows what she was wearing? The reality is that Jesus didn't condemn her. He says, has no one condemned you? Now, I want you to get this. There is a difference between acceptance and approval. Would you agree with me on that? Mm -hmm. You guys agree? Yeah. There is an ex a difference between accepting of, some, being accepting of somebody and approving of their behavior. Does that make sense? I can accept you without approving of your behavior. It's kind of like with my kids. I don't always like what my kids do, but I always love them because they're always my kids and I always accept them. We can do that even with people we don't like right now. Well, how do you do that? Well, you understand that God values that person and he values you the same. Number two, he accepts people just like he accepted us. Now, remember what you were like before you were a Christian? Do you guys remember that? Um, in, uh, in Corinthians, I believe it is, the apostle was, uh, he was talking, he says, remember how, how some of you were liars and gossips and this and that, and he says, that's not you anymore. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm not that guy anymore. Uh, I've got a long way to go, but at least I'm not that guy anymore. Well, the scripture says we learn to accept others the way Christ accepts us. Now, notice this in John 3, 17. Let's read this out loud together, okay? John 3, 17 says this. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jesus. And the Bible says that God didn't send Jesus to start condemning people or judging them or to, to put them down or to uh, you know, gossip or whatever. The Bible says that Jesus came to save the world, not to condemn it. I want us to be like Jesus. If Jesus didn't con condemn people, why do we think sometimes that we can? Um, we need to learn to accept people without approving of them. I want you to notice this passage in Matthew chapter 5. It says this, you have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That was actually uh, something that was being said by the religious leaders at the time. If people don't like you, don't worry about it, you don't have to like them back. You remember that passage in 1 John, we, we talked about that when we did that series earlier this year uh, on 1 John. There was people saying, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Notice what Jesus says. But I say, I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there, uh, there for that? What reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. Uh, Matthew lumped himself right into that, and himself being a tax collector. Look. Even tax, corrupt tax collectors do that much. They will even love people that, that love them back. But notice what he says. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Even people who don't care about God do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Did you hear that last part? You are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You know what I learned about that? Or when I thought, I thought that and I saw that? I thought this, nobody's perfect. God, what do you mean be perfect? I'm not perfect. The people I go to church with aren't perfect. God, what do you want us to do? Um, it's an attitude of striving to become more like Christ, mature in how we respond to one another. Now, I want you to notice uh, this on your outline. Now, the second thing it says there, it says this week, 
Now look at it. I want you to actually do this. If the person sitting next to you, don't write their name down yet, but take it home and then you can write it later. This week I will show acceptance to, and I want you to notice this, someone who irritates you or is hard to love. Who is driving you crazy right now? The Bible says that you and I too are to value them and to accept them. We don't have to agree with behavior at all. But we are to value and accept. Why? Because Christ did that with us. Notice the third thing we can learn from the story. And that's this. Loving people like Jesus involves forgiving others like Jesus forgave me. Loving people like Jesus involves forgiving others like Jesus forgave me. He's standing there in front of that woman and he asks her, where are all your accusers? And she says, they're all gone. They left. Notice what he says to her. Then neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 22, Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall I uh, shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? How often should I forgive people? If they hurt me over and over again, how often should I forgive them? Up to seven times? Now the amazing thing about that was, according to the law at that time, I believe that you only by law had to forgive a person four times. And, and Peter comes along and he says, look, I'll give you an extra three, Jesus. That's how holy I am. I want you to know what Jesus tells them. Uh, Jesus said to him, I did not say up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. 490 times. Jesus said, don't even ask that question. If somebody sins against you, you should be willing to forgive them. But Jesus, why, why should I do that? You know what? They don't care what they did to me. Uh, I'll forgive them, but I'm never going to forget what they did to the Lord. Um, the scripture says that we are to forgive, uh, not to hold it against them. Um, like Jesus doesn't hold, this, hold it against us, right? When we ask for forgiveness, the scripture says he removes it as far as from the east to the west. He just gets rid of it. Up to 70 times 7. Three reasons why I should forgive others uh, that are on your outline. Number one is this. God's forgiven my past. God has forgiven my past. That should be enough by itself. As a good reason why we should forgive other people. Why? Because God's forgiven me of everything I've done. Notice what he says in Ephesians. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. As well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one to each other. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. The thing about forgiveness and not letting go and not forgiving is this. Bitterness and rage and anger and harsh words and slander all follow that. You ever, yeah, you ever notice how when somebody hurts you and you're unwilling to forgive it, usually it affects you a whole lot more than that person? Uh, usually they don't even care. Sometimes they don't even know that you're angry with them. And the scripture says, look, you've got to be tender-hearted towards one another. Forgiving one another. Just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. I want you to notice the second point. The second reason why we should forgive others is because I'm going to need God's forgiveness today. I'm going to need God's forgiveness today. It's possible to leave church and to walk out the door and sin against God. Is it not? Yeah, it is. Um, we come to church and we sing songs and we hear his message and we pray to him. And then uh, we want to live for God and we go out the doors and we live like the devil sometimes. Um, we're going to need God's forgiveness today. Notice what it says. Um, if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins because we... Because we can trust God to do what is right. He will cleanse us from all the wrongs we have done. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a great verse. That whenever I blow it, I can go to God and say, God, forgive me. And he says, I'll forgive you. I'll cleanse you from all 
unrighteousness, the Bible says. Notice this next verse. I'm going to need God's forgiveness tomorrow. The third reason why we need to forgive is because tomorrow I'm going to need his forgiveness too. Uh, he's already forgiven me. I'll probably need it today and tomorrow I know I'm going to need it or in the near future. Um, Romans 8, 1 says there is now how much condemnation? No. No. None. Zero. Right? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now is 